Reclaim AI and balance with EQ, structural oppression or liberation. Big questions. Welcome to a world where algorithms decide who gets stopped, who gets served, who gets surveilled, and too often who gets oppressed. Tonight, we ask, is AI cementing centuries of segregation or can it become a liberation engine? Over the next hour, we'll confront hard data, hear from activists in Cape Town and Chicago, and guide you in deploying EQ-driven sustainable strategies to reclaim technology for justice. Ask yourself, are we coding prejudice into every bite? Or are we bold enough to decolonize our data? Let's begin. Part one, the architecture of algorithmic bias. In the digital dawn of the 21st century, our societies have entrusted algorithms with unprecedented power. Yet these streams of code often carry the weight of centuries-old prejudices, crystallizing structural inequities into lines of software. Tonight, we illuminate those hidden fault lines where algorithms meant to liberate instead replicate the darkest legacies of discrimination. One, facial recognition's fault lines, data point, the 2019 National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, study revealed a staggering disparity. Facial recognition systems misidentify darker-skinned women up to 35% more often than light-skinned men. Study highlight. At MIT's Media Lab, researcher Joy Bolamwini coined the term coded gaze. She showed that leading commercial systems fail to identify black women's faces 20-34% of the time, compared to near-perfect accuracy for fair-skinned men. Imagine walking through a checkpoint, your heart pounding, palms sweaty, only to find yourself flagged not by a sentinel or guard, but by a faceless algorithm. This cold code proclaims you suspicious without a word. These aren't random glitches, they are the echo of social hierarchies we once thought left behind in history's archives. Academic Insight Dr. Ruha Benjamin in Race After Technology describes the new gym code where ostensibly neutral systems reify racial bias under the guise of objectivity. Poetic interlude, a face is more than data points, it is history, memory and identity woven on the loom of time. Cultural voice musician, Nina Simone sang, it's an artist's duty to reflect the times. Her words remind us that in art or algorithm, reflection must strive for truth, not betrayal. Two, predictive policing and segregation algorithms promise preemptive safety. Predictive policing heralded as a revolution in crime prevention, yet beneath its polished veneer lies a blueprint for segregation. Data point, Chicago's strategic subject list compiled between 2012 and 2015, targeted black youth for intervention at a rate 400% higher than their white peers, despite similar offending rates. Quote, Cathy O'Neill, weapons of math destruction. When algorithms punish the poor and people of color for living in historical neighborhoods, it's math, not merit, that decides your fate. In Southside precincts, an automated list of potential offenders cheapens human lives into risk scores. A teenager walking home from school becomes a data point, his future determined by the zip code he calls home. This isn't justice, it's a digital ghetto where code enforces old lines on the map with chilling precision. Case in point, in 2018, journalist Jordan McTaggart discovered that the list's top 400 individuals accounted for fewer than six arrests in three years, yet their lives were upended, stops without cause, heightened surveillance, and a community's trust eroded. Academic Insight Dr. Christiane Lum of the Center for Data Science and Public Policy argues for dynamic recalibration requiring retraining models on unbiased current data to prevent perpetuation of past harms. Poetic interlude. Maps drawn in red ink once steered armies, now algorithms ink the same territories in lines of suspicion. Cultural voice. Fela Kuti proclaimed, music is the weapon of the future. Today, algorithmic bias is our silent weapon. Its notes govern who is free and who is surveilled. Three interactive question to viewers. We've walked through the halls of data injustice. Now it's your turn to turn the light inward. Where in your life might unseen algorithms be reinforcing old injustices? Drop your thoughts below. Let's map this bias together. 
guidance, consider the apps you use daily, your phone's face unlock, the ad recommendations that follow you, the credit scoring platforms that whisper your financial destiny. Ask, who benefits from these invisible gates? Who is left outside, locked in by coded exclusion? Academic prompt. Dr. Sophia Umoja Noble's Algorithms of Oppression urges us to interrogate search engines and recommendation algorithms. Whose voices are amplified and whose are erased? Poetic call. Our comments section is more than text. It is a tapestry of lived experience. Contribute your thread. Cultural voice. Bob Marley reminded us, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Freedom begins when we recognize the cages built by our own design. Four, the song of accountability. As we chart these fault lines, recall the words of James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. In the coming segments, we turn from diagnosis to treatment, introducing the Ubuntu AI Collective of Cape Town, the Engaged Justice Cooperative of Chicago, and our triple turbo engine of IQ, EQ and AIQ for sustainable transformation. Algorithms reflect us. Now, it's our turn to rewrite the code. Prepare to witness how community-driven audits, ethical cooperatives, and empathetic tech literacy workshops can convert bias into balance, segregation into solidarity, and digital oppression into collective liberation. Part two, case study, Ubuntu AI Collective, Cape Town. Our story, Thabo Mbeki, pseudonym, a former township teacher in Kayalitsha, saw facial recognition cameras installed without consent. Students were flagged as persons of interest. In 2021, he co-founded Ubuntu AI Collective, a grassroots cooperative. They pulled laptops, taught coding boot camps in township halls, and deployed an open source fairness toolkit, IBM AI Fairness 360, to audit and retrain police vendor models. A breakthrough came when they retrained the system on a local dataset of 10,000 faces and reduced false positives by 60%. They then negotiated data sovereignty packs with local law enforcement. Every automated alert had to pass a human EQ check. An officer certified by Ubuntu in an empathy mapping workshop. The result? Stop and search incidents in Kyalicha plummeted by 35% and community trust increased by 48% in local YouGov surveys. Thabo's mantra echoes Fela Kuti's defiance. Music is the weapon of the future. He adapted it. Code is the weapon of liberation. Art the Three, interviews with Chicago activists, Monica Reyes, community organiser, predictive policing labelled my nephew, likely offender, before he'd even stepped outside. Jamal Lewis, civic tech developer, demos Fairwatch, a Python-based bias detector for arrest data logs. Data, Lewis's team found 27% of precincts had arrest rates 2x above predicted norms, correlating with predominantly black neighbourhoods. Across the globe, from Kyalich's corridors to Chicago's blocks, grassroots innovators prove that with EQ, we can humanise the hardest code, and with AIQ, we can enforce it ethically. Part 4. Sustainable Strategies Toolkit 1. Bias Audit and Remediation, IQ plus AIQ. Step by step, install IBM AI Fairness 360. Run disparity impact tests on your model. Retrain on balanced datasets or apply reweighting. Metric, aim to cut demographic error ratios below 1.2.1. Two, ethical AI cooperatives, SI plus AIQ. Blueprint, pool local resources, hardware, data, expertise. Democratic code governance, one person, one vote on model changes. Shared profits reinvested in community tech literacy programs. Three, EQ-driven tech literacy, EQ plus SI, workshop model, empathy mapping, participants share personal tech harms, hands-on, AIQ, audit a public dataset for bias. Co-design session, blueprint a small app addressing a local need. These aren't theoretical fixes. They're proven, repeatable and scalable. Your community can adopt them next week. Part 3. 
long-form story, The Chicago Cooperative That Rewired Justice. In 2022, after months of tense town halls, the Engage Justice Collective in West Garfield Park secured a pilot with the Chicago PD, 50 street cameras to be run by their own cooperative of formerly incarcerated youth. They used open CV and a custom-built bias filter to anonymize faces and only flag behavioral anomalies based on movement patterns, not race. One night, the system flagged a group of teenagers dancing under a streetlight, mistaken for potential loiterers. The cooperative officer, trained in EQ de-escalation, approached, recognized the error, and invited them to a pop-up Lofi concert. Word spread, resentment eased, and the city agreed to expand the model. A year later, West Garfield Park saw gun violence drop by 22%, youth hospital visits for altercations down 31%. Quote, when tech respects humanity, data becomes a bridge, not a barrier. Jamal Lewis. Part 6. Reflective call and audience engagement. We've witnessed how code can entrench apartheid-style control or rewrite it into liberation. Now, it's your turn. Interactive prompts. Where have you seen AI reinforce injustice? Which strategy could your community adopt first? Share a local example. We'll feature three in our next live session. Call to action. This is more than tech talk. It's a revolt of conscience, a call to decolonize every line of code. Subscribe to join our vanguard of data justice. Share this video to spark your network's transformation. And let's hit a million views in 72 hours. Not for vanity, but to light a million sparks of change. Until next time. Stay critical, stay compassionate, stay relentless. Subscribe button, links, IBM Fairness, 360 Tutorial, Ubuntu AI Collective Donation Page, Engage Justice App Demo, 